Welcome to Friday Fun. So today we are once again in the native plant garden and we're going to be visiting different places, partly in the preserve and partly out here, to talk about today's topic, which is resting animals. And the big word we're going to learn today is dormancy. Dormancy. It means to be resting and to go for a long rest, not a short rest. So all of us animals and people, we all sleep at night or sometimes animals sleep during the daytime. But that's just one part of the day. I'm talking about a longer rest. Rest for many days or weeks or even months. They'll be resting. And not only animals rest, but plants do also. And we're going to look at some plants here and show you how they're resting. I want to go back to dormancy, though. Dormancy is a big word, and it just means resting or long periods of resting. But I want to also talk about something maybe you've heard of. Have you heard about how bears can hibernate? Bears live in the mountains, typically, where it gets nice and snowy in the winter and really, really cold. And what they do is they'll dig a den underground and crawl in there after eating plenty of food and getting fattened up for the, their rest. And we call that hibernation. Here in the preserve, I don't know of any animals that really do a true hibernation, but they do have periods of rest. So we're going to look, first of all, at some plants. And if we're going to walk right over here, and we're going to see a couple plants that are resting. Now, when plants are resting, they can rest in the summertime or the wintertime, depending on what they need to do. And this plant over here is a really fun-looking plant. I think it looks kind of like straight out of a Dr. Seuss book. It's called a giant Coreopsis, and it has a big, pretty yellow flower. It looks like a sunflower. And it looks pretty dead, doesn't it? But it's not dead. And it got a little bit of water in the middle of October, and it responded to the water by starting to make some little green leaves. And there's some more over here. They're a little bit bigger. When we look at the plant, we see all the dead leaves from last time. And when the rains come, they'll get a little bit softer and they'll start falling off and the new green ones will come in. So because it's so dry during the summer, it goes summer dormancy. It rests during the summer. And when the rains come, that's when its growing period is, straight through the spring. And then it gets drought, dry again, like drought time is the summer and it rests again. So it's very much alive, but it's resting through the summer. Right next to it is another plant I wanted to talk about, and this one looks really dead. Look at this one. This one is called a lilac verbena, and it pretty much looks dead, doesn't it? Well, some parts of it actually are dead, and in order to, to spare its life, it'll say, okay, some branches can die and some can live. And the ones that die will eventually kind of break off when it, you know, and just kind of crumble and become part of the ground again. But if we look more carefully, we can see that some of the branches are not dead. They look a little bit redder. And if you scrape on the part of the, the red part of the bark, you can see underneath it's kind of green and it's living inside. And these branches that are alive will wait for the water, the rain will come, they'll send off new leaves and then in the spring and summer some beautiful flowers. So this is its dormant time. It's summer and fall dormant and it grows during the winter. We're gonna head over to the other side of the garden and look for some other plants. And the plants that we're going to look at now are going to be a couple plants that are winter dormant. So they're growing like crazy during the summer, but then as fall comes, they lose their leaves and they become resting through the winter. And remember our beautiful Rogers red grape? Look at those leaves have fallen off. There's a nice sparrow inside there. A little white crowned sparrow has come to visit and the leaves of the grape have fallen off. It's dormant now through the whole winter, and then when it warms up in the spring, it'll grow new leaves. And how about in the background? Those tall sycamore trees, they're losing all their leaves too, and they will be dormant through the winter. 
And then when it gets warmer again, they'll grow new leaves. So some plants are summer dormant and some plants are winter dormant. Let's keep looking. Oh, this grape plant over here is still losing its leaves. It hasn't lost them all yet, but it will. But it looks pretty, the color is pretty. So over in this garden, we can see the St. Catherine's Lace. And if we look carefully at these leaves, they look like they're dying. And in a little bit, they're not really dying. Actually, some of them have died and fallen off. They get a little crunchy and fall off. But the other ones are holding on to whatever water they have. And they are just waiting for the rain to come back. They are resting. When we get some rain, hopefully in December, they will start leafing up again. So plants have dormancy or resting time either in the summer or in the winter, and some don't have either. Some stay green all year, like the coyote bush. It has some seeds right now, but it will never lose leaves and it will never go dormant. It just stays green. Okay, we're gonna head over to the preserve next and see what some, some animals do. Hi, we have moved out into the preserve and we're looking down at the ground, close to the ground. We're looking for these guys. These are our harvester ants. And I was thinking that they might have already closed up their nest and been down for their rest. But the nest, he's carrying, she's carrying something, but she's getting a little confused. The nest hole is over here. So they're gonna carry that seed all the way down here and add it to their storage. But I've stepped right there and that might have messed her up as far as she's not exactly sure where the hole is now because I have messed up the trail. Hey, you gotta come back, the hole's over here. So what they'll do, especially when it's gonna start raining and it gets a lot colder, is they'll put a cap on top of their hole. They'll seal it up. And when they seal it up, then they'll be down there for several months have plenty of food that they stored and they won't be doing very much they'll just be resting but they will have something to eat and then come the springtime when it warms up they'll open up their hole and they'll start coming out and they'll start collecting seeds all over again okay we've walked into the preserve and we've gone down the main path and right behind me are the sheds and the second little nursery area and if you'll notice there's some big rocks on the ground and those big rocks when they're in the sun those are perfect places for lizards to sit in the sun and warm up. The lizard that we have the most of in the preserve is called the Western Fence Lizard. They also call them blue bellies because they have blue on the underside, really bright on the boys. So what do the lizards do as the weather gets colder? Well, they do small bits of dormancy. They hide in crevices, maybe under a log or under a board or something where they can just kind of hunker in, slow down their heart rate, slow down their breathing. And then if we get like a sudden burst of warm weather, then maybe they'll kind of wake up and come out and do a little eating, some bugs and stuff, and then head back in. Sometimes they could be in there for weeks or sometimes just a few days, but they do have a, a period of dormancy, which is shorter than just sleeping at night. They're sleeping for many days, weeks, or even longer. So we're gonna pan over to an area that has typically a lot of lizards. And they like to be out here on the wood pile and it's a place I like to stop and look for them. We'll see if we can see any today. They're pretty fast so it's hard to see them sometimes and they camouflage so well. But if we don't see any lizards today, that could be a good sign of them resting. And they could even rest in a place like this. In the wood pile, they can certainly rest inside the crevices between the wood, or they can even tuck in to these little places like where the bark is, so they almost have a blanket. They can get kind of flatter and skinnier and slip in there. Or maybe when this one too, they could fit right in there and they could have a little bit of a blanket while they're resting till it gets warmer again. Hi, we're still over by the sheds, and this is where we're going to read the story. I'm sitting on one of those big rocks we just saw when we were looking for lizards. And our story today 
is called wait, pause, rest. Dormancy in nature. Look at those little frozen ladybugs. Isn't that cute? They got frost on them. If you were dormant, you would pause. Waiting, resting, huddling, curling, napping. If you were a dormant tree, you would chill, rest, prepare. In your limbs, a sugary liquid would protect you from freezing inside. Tiny leaf blankets wrap around your buds and you would pause. In spring, days lengthen, temperatures rise, you unfurl. Look at those beautiful new leaves growing, it's springtime. This tree has woken up. If you were a dormant ladybug, you would fatten up, pile up, stiffen up. You would swarm into a ladybug pile, sharing the warmth together. You would pause. In spring, you would wiggle awake, feast and flit away. Off to find some aphids to eat. If you were dormant, a dormant arctic ground squirrel, you would pack on fat, become cold as air, barely move, you would pause. Every few weeks, you would shiver for hours to warm up. Oh, that doesn't sound very fun. As days grow longer, your heart quickens, you scurry around, and you find food. Looks a little bit like a gopher sticking there out of the hole, doesn't he? If you were a dormant chickadee, on a cold winter night, you would cool down, slow your heart, save energy. For just a few hours, you would pause. He's asleep. The next day, you rise early, rev up, and you fly. If you were a dormant alligator, when temperatures drop, you would move slowly, burrow into the mud, wait out the cold. You would pause. On warm days, you'd come out of your den, sun yourself, and seek a snack. If you were a dormant earthworm in a drought, you would curl up in a ball underground, seal yourself in mucus inside a soil nest. You would pause, snug in a knot in the dry soil. When the rains return, you uncurl, moisten your skin, stretch and squirm. If you, were a, if you were dormant, you would be silent, still, waiting, just waiting, until maybe the spring, maybe the warmth, maybe the rain helps you. Stir, burst, appear. There's our chickadee. She's awake now. So animals and plants have to rest. Look at that. Do you know what that is? That's the nest of the paper wasp. They scratch off the wood and add it to their saliva, the spit in their mouth, and they make those little cells. And inside those cells is where they raise the babies, the larva, and then they make a pupa and they come out as, a, as an adult. Now, Miss Susan's going to look over toward me, and I'm going to show you what the adult looks like. So this is a picture of the paper wasp. And the paper wasp is black and yellow, and they have a big stinger. At least it can be, really can hurt quite a bit. But during the summertime, they make those nests above, 
they grow all the the larva and make all the babies and they keep the new ones keep hatching and keep feeding the babies they work as a very good team in a colony and then at the end of summer when they cannot collect any more caterpillars to feed their babies then most of the adult wasps actually die there's a few a few that'll be queens next year and they'll find them places little and they'll find little places to hide maybe in a structure, like maybe under the crevices or hiding inside. No, can't get in there, but there might be a place where they could hide here or they could hide maybe in a little bit of the tubes over here. And then when the weather gets warmer again, they'll wake up and they'll start all over and they'll start making a new nest just like the one you saw. So here we are still over by the sheds and I wanted to talk about the next animal that has to go dormant and it goes dormant during the summertime and partly into the beginning till the rains come because its dormancy is dependent on having enough insects to eat and having enough moisture. So we're gonna talk about the Pacific tree frog and the tree frogs can change color. So in my picture, they're green, but the ones that I found is more the color of where it's living. It's in this little sink in this trash bag that was stuffed into the sink, but you can see it looks wet and they need the moisture and he's moving now. I'm gonna pull him out and see if we can see him. We woke him up. He was probably resting really well and nice and damp inside there. And look, he looks brown, just kind of brownish black, the same as the color of the bag. So I'll crinkle it back up and put him back in there so he can continue sleeping. I think we woke him up. But it's time for him to rest and wait till the rain. We'll fill up the marsh again, bring all the insects and everything he needs to do to make more frogs next time. And if it's a boy, he'll make that noise and there'll be a lot of them making that noise, but that won't happen till March, maybe the end of February. Okay, I'm gonna crinkle him back in gently. and We're gonna stuff him back into the sink so he can go back to sleep. That's a good hiding place, isn't it? He found a great place for his dormancy. Now we've just walked over from the sheds to the fence that's in the other corner of the preserve. And behind the fence is the sump. And let's walk up and look through the fence and see if we can see the water down below. This is where the water from the sprinkler runoff and other things goes into our sump. So it's got water in it even when it hasn't rained for a long time. Can you see the water? And swimming in the water are ducks and coots, and even there's some geese down there today, but I can't see them from here. But we've come over to the sump for a very good reason, because we want to talk about another animal that lives in the preserve that has to go dormant. And this animal is a bullfrog. Let me show you a picture of the bullfrog. So the bullfrog is much bigger than the little tree frog we talked about earlier. Sometimes they can get much larger even than this picture. That's a big frog. And bullfrogs are all mouth. They have a giant mouth. And you'll see in the story that we're gonna do in a moment how big their mouth can be. So bullfrogs have a different way of, of going dormant. And they go dormant during the winter time. Now here we don't have a really frosty, snowy winter, but sometimes when it gets cold enough, they have to go way down in the bottom of the sump to where it's all muddy and bury themselves in the mud. And when they get down there, their heart rate will slow down to almost nothing. And they really aren't breathing, although they can take in a little bit of oxygen through their skin. They'll be down on the bottom, and then when it gets warmer, they'll come back up at to the top. And in the springtime, they may even just get moved into the big marsh. You know how they get moved? They could hop. But really, we end up cleaning the water through the biofilter. Can't see it from here, but it's behind me. And then we pump the water that comes in the sump into the deeper part of the marsh. So some of them go through some big pipes, maybe as tadpoles or maybe as frogs, to get into the big marsh. So their dormancy is to bury themselves in the mud and hang out till the water warms up. So now we're gonna read a story about, a very silly story about a bullfrog. And this story is called, I don't wanna go to sleep.
I can't wait for winter. The snow, the fun. Pig told me all about it. Why? I'll skate and I'll drink warm things. Did I mention the snow? Oh, sorry. You don't get to have fun in winter. Why not? Because you're a frog. Frogs hibernate. I don't know what that means, but I don't like it. It means you asleep. Your dad is hibernating now. He is? That explains a lot. Didn't you wonder where he was? I want to be like a cat curled up by a fire. You can't do that. Why not? Frogs like to be warm. There's a fine line between warm and crispy. I want to be like a pig. Pigs sleep in a fluffy plaid blanket. You can't do that. Why not? First of all, you could get lost in there. Also, plaid is not your color. Mostly though, I'm taking his blanket. I want to play in the snow like rabbit. But you can't play in the snow. Why not? Ever heard of a snow frog? Nope. Want to guess why? Let me explain. In winter, frogs sink to the bottom of a pond and cover themselves in mud. Then they sleep and they sleep there until spring. You can see that the pond is here, the mud, the water, the ice and the snow on top. Now in the sump behind me, there won't be any snow on top and there won't be any ice on top because it doesn't get that cold here. See? Ah! So everyone will be having fun while I'm asleep in the mud? Yes, hibernating like your friend bear. I don't want to be a bear. What's wrong? You're all gonna have fun and I'm gonna spend the winter sleeping like a cold, muddy bear frog. A bear frog, that's not a thing. Well, we don't have to have that much fun in the winter. Sometimes I burn my tongue on cocoa. I lost my scarf once. Um, my snowballs aren't always round. Thanks for trying, guys. Is there anything we can do? Well, one thing. Thanks for coming, everyone. Just think, it's only 139 days until spring. Did he say 139? Look what good friends, they all came to go in the mud with him. Such a silly story. Well, that pretty much finishes our talk today about dormancy. Some plants are dormant in the winter and some are dormant in the summer and some animals are dormant during the dry time and some are during the cold time and some are during the hot time. Everybody needs to rest. See you next time. Bye.